Formula 1 stands at the peak of motorsport innovation, from powerful hybrid engines and elite safety systems to its most defining feature, aerodynamics. The design of an F1 car isn't just about looks, it's about shaping the airflow to generate downforce, reduce drag and enhance overperformance. Every curve, wing, inlet and surface has been designed by engineers to control air with precision. Using a tool called CFD, which stands for Computational Flight Dynamics and is used by Aero Engineers in Formula 1, we'll explore how the 2022 F1 car managed airflow. And at the end, we'll answer the question what makes Formula 1 car design so effective? We're going to talk about this today. The front section is miserable. This leads to a really small stagnation point which causes a tiny high pressure zone. Compared to our regular cars which have big blocky aerodynamic noses, here we have the total opposite situation. Moreover, below the front wing we have a low pressure area which of course enhances downforce. However, this pressure difference between the high on the top and low underneath has some drawbacks. In nature, everything wants to be balanced. The same goes for pressure. When we have our pressure difference, the flow naturally detaches from the sides and moves below. For that reason, in F1 cars we have end plates on the wings to prevent flow from detaching. Besides that, we have two small airfoils which also help guide the flow forward toward the cooling inlets. Now, talking about cooling inlets, with the new regulations introduced in 2022, many things have changed, including the cooling inlet size. Take a look at the brake or side pod cooling systems. If you compare them with previous year concepts, you will see a decrease in size. In general, decreasing the size of cooling inlets positively affects aerodynamics. But more importantly, this change hasn't decreased their effectiveness. To illustrate this in a 3D pressure visual, you can clearly see that on the main inlets you still have high pressure, indicating a high mass of air is being directed the right way. However, the cleanest portion of air goes to the rule hoop intake. Why? Because it captures the free stream airflow, which is not disrupted by the front components and is clean and full of energy. And if you would like to simulate your own vehicle using CFD, the same software used by Formula 1 engineers, then head to osrlab.com. There you can apply for custom error analysis of your vehicle to find out how your car cuts through the air. Link is in the description. Let's not forget about another key element of every sport car, the suspension. In Formula 1 you have two types of suspension, push rod and pull rod. Generally, the pull rod is located closer to the ground and offers better airflow over the top surface, meaning it's more aerodynamic compared to the push rod. Here we're dealing with push rod, but what truly matters here is that in F1 the suspension is fully exposed to the air, since it's not covered and is totally open. Engineers tried to make it as smooth as possible, so it wouldn't create much drag, but instead, its shape creates lift, which decreases stability at the front. Another problematic component in F1 cars are the wheels. Here, they are also fully exposed and disrupt the incoming airflow, creating dirty air. The main idea is to kick this poor quality air away from the car, preventing it from entering the underbody. To do so, in F1 cars there are air tools that help manage dirty air, for example, wheel deflectors or four leading edges. Leading edges are positioned in such a way that they push the dirty air created by the wheels outward, ensuring that the flow under the bodywork remains clean and smooth. Speaking about the underbody, we can clearly see how well designed it is. Just have a look at the friction visual and we will see that most of the time the floor remains attached, staying smooth and clean without any separation. This creates low pressure which enhances downforce. And as we discussed before, airflow naturally wants to equalize pressure. On the wings, we have end plates and here we are dealing with barge boards. With the new regulations in 2022, Bargeboards became simpler without complex designs. Moreover, they still prevent flow from trying to equalize the high pressure on top and low pressure underneath. 
And before moving towards the rear, I would like to point out some additional area parts in the middle section. Have a close look at the halo. The halo is a crucial element for the safety of drivers. Moreover, it's a regulated component, meaning it has strict design controlled by FIA. While it's essential for safety, in terms of aerodynamics, it's not very efficient. It produces a high amount of lift. Now, the halo is not the only regulated component that must be on the car. There are plenty of them. For example, the TCAM which records onboard laps of each driver or the small airfoils near it. These components all combined produce lift. Now moving toward the rear, we can see that the suspension here generates less lift compared to the front one. First, we are dealing with a pull rod suspension type and secondly, the rear suspension does not face the free stream airflow directly. It's hidden behind front components and this decreases its negative impact on the lift. Besides that, we also have wheels here, which similar to the front ones disrupt air and produce turbulence. To kick this dirty air out, the lower side section is designed in a way that directs this airflow outward, preventing it from spreading across the rear section. Above all, the most influential element in the rear section is the rear wing. Look at this huge high pressure buildup on top of it. This pushes the end of the car towards the ground successfully, increasing downforce. Below the rear wing we can find another important feature of the F1 car, the beam wing. It directs air from under the car upwards, contributing heavily to the rear downforce. Moreover, it pushes dirty air above the car behind, meaning it influences overtaking. It is important to mention that in the new regulations coming in 2026, the beam wing will be removed from the rulebook. The new concept presented by FIA for 2026 is truly really radical and includes major changes compared to the current regulations. Let me know in the comments if you would like to see an error analysis of F1 2026 vehicle. Now back to the current regulations. In addition, take a look at the position of the rear exhaust pipe. It was also placed with a clear purpose. When exhaust gases are going out, they speed up the surrounding air, positively affecting the car's downforce. But this position of exhaust has not always been the same. For example, back in early 21st century, some teams positioned their exhaust pipes on the side of the car near the rear wheels. That type of concept is called blown diffuser and its main job is to clean dirty air created by rear wheels and prevent it from impacting the diffuser performance. Speaking about the diffuser, it also plays a crucial role here. It kicks the air upward, helping minimize the wake size behind the car. And if you take a look at the wake behind this car, you will notice how small it is. This is due to the smart and well-designed concept of the car. So what values does it achieve? This particular 3D model of F1 car from 2022 achieves a drive coefficient of 0.81 and a negative lift coefficient of minus 1.71. This is a huge lift coefficient, meaning it truly really produces a massive amount of downforce. But the trade-off is a high drag coefficient. However, it's important to mention that these values change depending on the RS setup used by the team and each area setup is based on track specifications. For tracks with long straights like Monza, Jeddah or Spa, the area setup usually aims for low drag, meaning the angle of the wings will be less steep and the car won't produce as much downforce. However, the opposite setup is used for tracks like Monaco, Singapore or Hungary Ring, where teams look for maximum downforce even if that means higher drag. One thing never changes, each team pushes its car to the absolute limit and they're always testing new concepts and designs, constantly discovering improvements and upgrading the current concept. This is one of the reasons why Formula 1 is so captivating. Everything is created with a clear, calculated vision driven by aerodynamics.